jealousy is a weak basis for a throne. <laughs> what happens when policies are instituted, in, instituted? A, it invites suspicion. B, it alienates respect. C, it leads to ruins. Policy, when I saw the word policy, I couldn't help but see the word police in it. But policy is a selected, planned line of conduct in light of which individual decisions are made and coordination achieved. Law and order means one thing to white America and another thing to black America. Just like when we say, um, when a white father some disciplines his son, he said, boy, look at me when I talk to you. And black f folks discipline their son and said, boy, don't look at me like that when I speak to you. <clears throat> Amen. So, so the discipline is different, which means now we've got to tell our children, look at me when I speak to you and get them educated to look into the eyes of men when they talk to them so that we as a people don't be looking away from people when we are addressing them. You are not looking away from the person that is interviewing you. You're not looking away from the individual that you're negotiating with. You're not looking away from the oppressor when you're talking to him about the redistribution of power. You're not looking away when you're trying to do business. And then when you have to remind them of the statistics of how many of your people have come in and done business here and how much money they've made, that, that there needs to be a discount here. Amen. Slavery. They were deprived of the right and value of their own labor, deprived of the right and the value of their own labor. Five more minutes. Bad leadership. Now, now, now. How does what, what? What is bad leadership? Well, we can see this Pharaoh came into office. That was bad leadership. Amen. Any people that enslave another people is bad leadership. Amen. And when we look at the psychology of what, of, of what is going on, my, my God, it's, it's, it's a miracle that some of you have your sanity. Amen. And when a black man is 50 years and older and is still able to walk around saying we should salute him as an elder because he's been through some stuff if he still has his sanity. Amen. If you tried to go up in this world, if you had to deal with, and see, some of you had to come through Jim Crow laws, and others of you had to come through things where you were, had your seat set on the Greyhound bus, but when you <clears throat> got across the Mason-Dixon line, you had to get up now and start moving to the back of the bus. This is real, church. And any people that are failed to remember their history is doomed to repeat it. Number one, bad leadership will produce wicked people. When you got bad men in government, it will produce wickedness in its nation. Number two, he will influence the weak by his charisma. Don't be fooled. There's a lot of charismatic personalities, but they're oppressors, and you've got to see them as they are. Number three, they terrify the timid by his power. Amen. Number four, gain the servile by his flattery. In other words, they're speaking a whole lot of nice things. Amen. And listen, uh, um, there'll be some that come to you and say, well, you know, you're not like them. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? Because I, I have class. You try to tell me I'm not black because I have class? Amen. And some of you start grinning from ear to ear and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. 
full. What you mean? Amen. See, we are the only, now, 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 now let me share something with you that is so stupid. We're the only race of people that if a person has class, will say they're not black. Now, you don't see, if a Jew disagree with another Jew, they don't say, you're not Jewish. If a Japanese disagree with another Japanese, they don't say, you're not Japanese. We're the only group of people where an individual get a little class. You're trying to be white. No, I'm a black man with class. Because I have class, don't say I am not black. That's what we mean by you need to be liberated. The chains are still on your mind. It grieved my spirit when we were having a discussion with some folks and some people were talking about Judge Thomas. And they said, well, you know, he's not black. I says. Why would you say he's not black? Well, look at him. He, he married a white woman. Well, what that got to do with it? Amen. He's still a black man. And if you understand the psychology of what was taking place, when he was saying that it was a high-tech lynching, understand what he was saying. And notice, I mean, it, look, at the, look at the insanity of our nation, the men that they had judging him. Knowing that he would go into office, but it says if he go into office, we're going to make sure he goes in with a cloud over his head. Let's keep the myth alive. Instead of our own people looking and saying, well, that's another brother coming into a place of honor. Amen. Another one that we need to salute because he's been through some mess to get there. Believe you, I believe he has a story along with many others. But somehow when we get individuals that come into places of prominence, we write them off and say, they are not black. Touch your neighbor and say, you need a raise in your mindset. Because that means in your mindset, anything that's trifling, anything that is sloppy is black. Subconsciously, that is what you're saying. That's what you believe, really. People have come and said, Zoe Ministries. Well, you know, they act right over there. Why? Because we desire to take a place and fix it up so it wouldn't look like something Buckwheat took a pencil out and wrote over the front door. So someone that has class, they're not your enemy tell them, says, teach me the rope so that I can be like you. Because it seems as though you are in some places that I need to be. Touch your neighbor and say, it's time to network. But there is a word to the bourgeois community. Because if I'm going to preach truth, I got to speak it on both sides. Those that have become detached from their culture and detached from their people. That I also must say to you that you owe something back to your community to pour back into them what was poured into you. For even the children of Israel, and we'll get to that when we get to Joshua, but even the children of Israel, when they were coming into their land of captivity, God told them, you cannot enjoy your land until your other brethren receive their inheritance. So the fact that we are still bound, you are still bound until all of Africa is free. I cannot rest 